Hi scholars, so today we're completing module two, lesson one. So as you may have noticed, we're starting the second module. So we finished our first module on multiplication and division. And module three, we'll, con we'll continue working on multiplication and division. But for module two, we're going to be looking at different forms of measurement, one of them being time. So let's look at a learning intention. Thoughtful mathematicians explore time as a continuous measurement by using stop watches. So by continuous measurement, that just means that it continues, it does not end. So uh, kind of looking at a stopwatch or a clock, you can see that it continues, it doesn't end. So it's not to sound redundant. All right, so let's look at a vocabulary. An analog clock is a clock that shows the time by the positions of the hour and minute hand. So when you look at an analog clock, you have the hour hand, which is the shorter hand, and then the minute hand, which is the longer hand. And there's usually a very skinny hand, which is the second hand, and that measures the amount of seconds that have passed. A digital clock is much easier to tell time on because it uses numbers to just represent the hours and minutes, and they're usually separated by a colon. Something we also use to help us tell the exact time is adding the letters PM and AM after the time, especially when writing the time. So for example, at 12 PM or 12 noon, most people are eating lunch. At 3.30 PM or a half past three, most people are on their way home from school or work. By 7.45 PM or a quarter to eight o'clock, people are getting ready for bed usually. And by 12 a.m. or 12 midnight, people are sleeping. When we look at a.m., back to midnight, 12 a.m. or midnight, we're sleeping. 8.30 a.m. or half past 8 o'clock, people are on their way to work or school. By 10.15 a.m. or a quarter after 10, people are usually at work or school. And back to 12 noon, 12 p.m., it is lunchtime again. So 12 p.m., I'm sorry, p.m. is the time between 12 noon and 12 midnight, and a.m. is the time between 12 midnight and 12 noon. So p.m. is usually the afternoon and evening, and a.m. is the morning hours. So we're going to use a stopwatch, like it said in the learning intention, to measure how long it takes us to do different activities. So I'm going to model that. Use a stopwatch. How long does it take you to snap your fingers 10 times? So how I'm going to measure this is I'm going to press start or play right before I start. And then I'm going to snap my fingers 10 times. Once I snapped my finger the 10th time, I'm going to pause to see how much time has elapsed or how much time has passed since I started. So let me go ahead and do that. So it took me six seconds. To snap 10 times. So now I'm going to let you do that. And you're going to write the numbers 0 to 25. Now, since you're going to be looking at my clock, I'm going to just put 40 seconds. But what you're going to do is when I say go, you're going to write the numbers 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, six and so on until you get to the number 25 sorry I'm not sure why the numbers look like that so again you're gonna write down all the numbers from 0 to 25 until you get to 25 so you're gonna start when I say go and then you'll stop when you get to 25 so just look back up at the clock to see how much time has passed again I'm only going to put 40 seconds it may take you less it should take you less because you're only writing 26 numbers. So on your mark, get set, go.
All right, 40 seconds have passed. So you should have been able to write all 26 numbers from zero to 25 and written down whatever number you saw once you got to 25. So for example, it may have taken you 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 32 seconds, 27 seconds, whatever number it was, you would just write it here. So let's pretend it took you 28 seconds. You would just write 28 seconds. Well, obviously I'm writing here. You could just write it on a piece of paper. So in the problem set, you'll be asked to do something very similar. Uh, time, how long it takes you to do different tasks. So if you have an iPhone or iPad, I want to show you how you can access the stopwatch. So first you'll click on the clock app, which is right here. And that's what it looks like. So this is what you'll be looking for. Then when you enter the clock app, it'll usually show you the word clocks. And you're going to click on the third tab, which says stopwatch. And then you'll see this screen. And you'll click on start whenever you start your task. And then re-click this button. And usually, it'll say end or pause uh, to end or whenever you stop whatever it is you're doing to see how much time has passed. And the numbers will be moving until you click stop. It's very important that you click it again to stop it. And then you can reset it. So don't continue pressing start because then it'll just show, like, it'll continue the same time. You won't be able to see, you won't start it from zero all over again. If you don't have an iPhone or an iPad, whichever device you are using, even if it's someone else's cell phone, like a cousin or dad or whoever it is, as long as it's a smartphone, or a newer device, it should have a stopwatch on it. Unless you have your own stopwatch, that's perfectly fine. Worst case scenario, you do not have anything to be able to measure how many seconds have passed. You can do something called counting Mississippis. So Mississippi doesn't have any significance. It's just saying the word Mississippi takes usually about a second to do. So when you count Mississippi, it's almost equivalent to a second. And I'll show you how. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi. So notice every time I counted up and said Mississippi, another second passed on the stopwatch. So if you do not have a stopwatch, that is one way you can measure these seconds without actually having the device to do so. All right, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, as always, reach out to me on Schoology or Hangouts.